Alright guys, gonna get started with this match in just a sec. Waiting for the teams to get in. Just waiting for their approval. Alright, there, good to go. Alright, so welcome to the Nexus Gaming Series, Season 4, Week 2, Division C West this time. We have Guys Gems versus Team Mopitas. And we're gonna go ahead and get started right now. This game loads. There we go. All right, we are starting out on Dragonshire on this match. Uh, we have the uh, current uh, first place team in Guys Gems on the blue side, and Team Mabita is currently ninth in the division uh, on the right side of the screen here. Guys Gems uh, seem to favor. <laughs> well, no one really likes playing against Duke Elves, so that's not too much of a surprise. Uh, Guys Gems uh, favor Dahaka uh, right now, so. Uh, I'd actually expect that uh, that if they would like to play that, that they would pick it up on this map. Dragon Sire specifically, Dahaga does a great job with split pushing in the top lane and being able to burrow in on any of the shrines in the map. See what Team Mappetos would like to ban in response. They seem to like banning um, Phoenix, you know, the current uh, meta bans, but they've been known to uh, swap around their bands depending on the situation. Alright, so they've done a little bit of research, it looks like. Team uh, Guys Gems has not, like, dropped a game. Uh, and so their Dahaka has played, been played four times and won every single time, so that's not too surprising here. Action. Guys Gems opting to go with Muradin, a solid first pick, uh, just getting their tank out of the way. Just kind of keeping their options open, not really revealing anything about what they want to go with on the first pick. I would expect guys, gems to pick up, well, uh, or team mobs has to pick up. Uh, they played a, a variety of different things, so it will be interesting to see what they would like to go with. Uh, they have, you know, in the past picked Falstead, uh, sometimes Varian, uh, sometimes Tracer. Uh, so really, all options are on the table right now uh, for Team Mapitas. Falstead maybe might be a possibility for them. They've they've shown a high priority on on Falstead in the past. Uh, then again, I'm only going off of four games here, so anything, you know, <laughs> all the conclusions that we can draw uh, are based off of a small amount of data since we're still in week two of this season. Going for Lili Tracer. Uh, Lili's, Lili's an interesting first pick here. Uh, I wonder uh, what the thinking with that is. Okay, all right, so <laughs> we're going to have a little bit of fun in the C division here. Guys Gems instantly picking up a Cho'Gal. Uh, it looks like... Uh, it's probably going to be an Ariel or Medic ban on the side of Team Mopitas, because that is a pretty strong combo. Yep, there comes Ariel. I would expect, you know, Guys Gems to ban out one of the percent health damage dealers. Uh, looks like they would like to get rid of Maltheal. Interesting. I think uh, it might have been... I think it was like a pretty good ban against Cho'Gal, but like once Cho'Gal hits level 16 and is able to become unstoppable and has a lot more tools for dealing with the CC that the other team has, um, it might have been good to ban a uh, another damage dealer in the percent health, but then again, that also runs the risk that they would figure out what you're doing. Mouthiel banned out here, really good choice against both Muradin and Cho'Gal. Uh, kind of getting rid of the uh, chance for percent health damage. Uh, on the side of Team Mopitas, I would sus I would suspect that it's going to be you know your uh, traditional counters to Cho'Gal being Tychus and Leo. We'll see if that's what they decide to go with, uh, or if they have people who are comfortable on those heroes. Uh, that's always a something to consider when when doing draft, um, because. The, even though you might hard counter a particular hero, uh, if you don't have anyone on your team that's really comfortable playing that, it can be pretty difficult. We'll see what they go with. Um, kind of, I don't know if they expected that pick at all. Um, I definitely didn't, so we'll see what they want to counter with. Really running down the clock. Trogal does, I think, pretty well in Dragonshire. Um, being the the mid lane and the bot lane are pretty close together, so you can get a decent uh, four man rotation, or uh, I guess three body rotations since Trogal counts as two people. 
Anubarak and Tigus picked up for uh, Team Mapitas. Real good. Anubarak can just remove Cho'Gal from the fight. Uh, I actually haven't checked recently if Gaul is still able to like do things while in Anubarak Cocoon, so we'll find out in this game. Rexar and Medic coming out. Uh, that is a lot of health on the side of Guy's Gems. We'll see if they have the damage to deal with Team Mapitas' composition. Uh, Tychus, in particular, does a real good job of burning through Morales' heals, um, so I think it's actually going to be a little difficult uh, on the side of Guy's Gems to uh, keep up their team's health pool in the face of Tychus' aggression, uh, if he's able to get in there at all, uh, since that is a real solid amount of CC and, and body blocking from the side of Guy's Gems. Rexar will be in the top lane, uh, presumably. Uh, Cho'Gal, Murden, Morales being the uh, four-man rotation in the middle and bot lanes, I suspect. So it looks like on the side of Team Mapitas, they would want to pick up a solo laner, I think. I think it would, it would be probably along the lines of something like Sonya. Thrall, maybe. Thrall actually does like percent health, uh, or can, uh, in the later stages of the game. It was Vala instead. Uh, so solo tank in Uberak, uh and opting to go and just kind of burn the, the composition of guys' gems to the ground with just auto attacks and constant damage. Um, I like it. Uh, I'm not quite sure if they'll have enough peel for uh, the squishies in the back line, uh, but they clearly think uh, that they will not you know, have too much problems with that. Cool. Uh, as we get into game, I uh, just want to mention the map bans real quick. Uh, we have banned Tomb of the Spider Queen and Cursed Hollow. Uh, we are going to Dragonshire first, and we will go after this game to Infernal Shrine. Right. I think um, I think Cho'Gal looks like it threw Mapathos for a loop a little bit. Uh, nice pick of the Tychus and the Nubarak. Uh, I think the draft... I don't know if it particularly favors anyone right now. I definitely think that Team Mapitas has the damage in order to deal with the composition from uh, Guy's Gems, and it's going to be on the, the up to the side of Guy's Gems to figure out uh, if they can uh, deal with all of that incoming damage. All right, so we are getting into game right now. On the left side, we have the blue team. We have, I'm going to have to bring up the tab screen to read the names off. We have Odin playing Cho. Cho. We have Spruggles playing Gaul. Swish playing Rexar. White Ghost playing Morales. And Cody Kraz on Muradin. Over on the right side, we have wow, Team Mapitas. We have Dietrich playing Vala. We have Dunoso on uh, Lili. Mac on Tracer. Homolian on Tychus. Three. And we have Bionet player on Anubarak. One. Team Mapitas immediately going to all three lanes, trying to get the uh, minion soak advantage. And the Strogal only counts as one body, they have the numbers advantage there. Lily and Tychus just kind of scouting out this mid lane. Doesn't look like they're going to try anything too crazy since they don't see uh, guys gems on the map. Pretty standard lanes right now. Uh, Vala and Anubarak are opting to deal with Rexar in the top lane. Interesting choice, doing two people in the top and having three people in the bot lane rotation. Uh, we'll see if Team Mapitas is able to uh, get the la get their lanes cleared out uh, enough uh, in order to deal with this rotation. Otherwise, it just kind of looks like they are in a holding pattern until uh, someone in the top lane is able to come down and help with the inks. Chris are just trying to clear. Trogal easily picking up the wave. Teams both even in XP right now. Looks like Mapitas maybe lost a few minions, but nothing too significant right now. Psychus is kind of scouting in the top lane, looking out for any of the rotations that might come out. Tracer needs to be a little bit careful, but it's Tracer, she should be able to get away uh, unless she gets bursted down too quickly. That's going to be a constant threat, just all of Gaul's abilities. Tracer's going to have to be able to make sure that she weaves in, in and out of them correctly in order to actually get damage done onto the backline. Although, I guess, you know, speaking of backline, Guy's Gems doesn't really have one. They have, like, all front lines, so it might be a little bit difficult for Tracer to get on anyone except for uh, Lieutenant Morales. Up on the top lane, we have Vala being caught out and taken down. Nice work by Rexar and Muradin up in the top lane. Nice pick, too, also 2v3. Uh, so great work by Guy's Gems to get that. <laughs> These four of the supports in the mid lane, we just have Lili making sure that no one is able to, uh, or just scouting out that uh, mid lane here. Uh, Lieutenant Morales soloing in the mid. 
Uh, interesting that they don't, I guess they don't, haven't really needed to have any big fights recently. Choco going ahead and stealing the siege camp to keep up the pressure on the bot lane. Uh, definitely good. Tracer doesn't have that much wave clear, but is definitely able to deal with the giants pretty easily since he's so mobile and doesn't actually get, to get hit by the giant's auto attacks. The people in the top lane, uh, Team Mabitaz really making sure that they want to, that they have control over this point. Guys, gems, uh, being careful to not get in too deep. Murden has his leap still, so uh, he's still being careful, even though it looks like he's diving in pretty deep. Good work there, making sure that he has an escape ready. Some damage dealt by those siege damage siege giants on the bot lane fort. Looks like Trace is going to try to steal his points. Chogal is not contesting it right now. But he will in a minute. Yep, there he goes. Cool. Uh, Guy's Gems has control of the top shrine now. Tyke is rotated down to the mid lane. Uh, there might be a fight as Guy's Gems tries to take the first Dragonite of the game. Both teams are very even right now, so they might not want to fight until one of them hits level 7. Burning going in, trading with Tychus. Both of them down to about 60% health. Uh, let's see, in terms of talents, nothing too uh, unusual looks like. We'll be going into Fast Feet and Blinding Winds. Morel is doing the grenade quest as usual. Oh, gotta be careful. Tychus rotated down, trying to get a pick there. Gets him down to about half health. Uh, both of the DPS on the side of Team Opta need to be careful because they're also within range of just getting bursted by some of uh, Gaul's abilities. Up in the top lane, continuing to trade. Uh, Rex are just kind of keeping hold of this. Doesn't look like without, you know, not too much problem pulling that. Both teams are now level 7. Cleanse picked up on Lili. Um, the standard stuff everywhere else looks like. Shogo gets scouted out, trying to take this bruiser camp. We'll see if, if Tracer and Tychus are able to get that before Morales shows up. Does not look like it. Team Mabitz is trying to get control of this camp real quick. Tracer's going to go down to do the damage over time. Nice work by Chogal. Just a little bit of uh, Tracer's helpful again. Not that big. Uh, unable to dodge the <laughs> damage coming out from Chogal there. So I guess just kind of cleaning up these mercenaries. Team uh, Guys Gems positioning up in the center to take the first Dragonite of the game. They get that pretty easily. See what Lily wants to do here. This doesn't look, look like anything. Uh, Guy's Gem is going down to get this bottom fort. Uh, good idea there. Morale is almost 1v1. Tychus? 120. Need two auto attacks to get that. Chasing really deep. <laughs> I appreciate the aggressiveness, but I don't think you're going to get that <laughs> by yourself. Um, <laughs> Guy's Gems get this fort pretty easily. No problem there. Anubarak uses Burrow Charge to get the safety. Grenade tries to get the displacement on him. And they go straight for keep walls here. Uh, there's not too much that Mopitas is doing right now to bring the Dragonite down. Now that Tychus and Bala are here, they shouldn't have too many problems with that. Really doing your best to heal up everything. Ultimate's picked up on the side of Guy Gem, so Team Mopitas has to be a little bit careful to disengage here. We have picked up, we have Medivac picked up on Morales. We have Hammer Twilight on, I think that's Cho. Shadow Bolt's Bali on Gaul as he uses right now, trying to get that over to Tychus, but actually doesn't look like he picks up anyone except a Nubarak. Nice grenade from Morales, finishing up that kill. Uh, <laughs> Merton went Haymaker, so uh, that, should be some, that should be fun to watch. Uh, and Bestial Wrath on Rekstar, powering up Misha. As Gems continues the Siege, um, they have a really good composition for sieging, just with the high health pools and just Morales continuously supporting. They have to be a little bit careful, because uh, Morales' energy is running down here, and they just barely managed to get that. Uh, they will retreat safely. Unless a noob wants to go in real deep. He gets stunned and knocked back. So, no engage happening, uh, and Tracer gets picked up in the top lane. Uh, nice work by Rexar there, I didn't fully see what happened, but um, always just getting stunned out and attacked. Guess that's a little obvious, but yeah, great work by Switch on that Rexar.
Both teams picking up their siege camps, getting some some even pressure on the bot lane. Team Optus, of course, now has to deal with catapults down there, so they're going to be trying to get the camps pushing and making sure that lane is cleared out. Ultimate picked up for Team Optus. We have Jug of a Thousand Cups on Lili, Cocoon on Anubarak. We have the Quantum Spike, so additional max health damage on Tracer's Pulse Bomb. Odin picked up on Tychus and Reign of Vengeance on Vala. Hero slain. gets the revenge kill up on Rexar. Didn't appreciate getting 1v1, so they 2v1 Rexar instead. Um, <laughs> so good kill there. Strogal scouting out in the bush. Trace are already taking out the half health. Lily is not here. Cocoon goes down. They're going to try to get morale before Chogo comes out. Tychus pops Odin as the medevac comes out, trying to get behind the walls. She does not quite get out in time, but it looks like she went far enough to get get to safety. Tychus goes down in the back. Numerek got hit behind the walls with Haymaker. So, uh, great disruption by Chogal, making sure that his team stays alive, specifically Morales. Uh, this is basically protect Morales. Like, you have a huge front line to do all of that protection. So, it's been really difficult for Team Amatos to actually get back there and get Morales specifically. Uh, that was a good cocoon, good engage, uh, but they didn't quite have the damage uh, to deal with Morales there. Edge Jumps has control of both shrines really quickly. Cholo comes in from the back. Uh, Tracer tries to get on Morales, misses the pulse pul bomb just barely. Maybe trying to heal everyone up, but Guy's Gems manages to get the Dragon Knight no problem. Up level 13 to 11 at this point. Um, Team Mavid does down. Talents here just has to defend this while Rexar split, push, split pushes in the top lane. Tychus gets knocked back, but <laughs> Dragon Knight doesn't, doesn't appreciate Tychus at all. Uh, his trait managing to, you know, his trait manages to burn down the Dragon Knight real fast. If they should be able to take out the Dragon Knight uh, before it actually manages to hit the keep. Uh, looks like Trigal's quest was completed. Uh, if you need a reminder of what that does, I do too. Uh, <laughs> increases the range of speed uh, of his uh, runic bomb. Rexar just keeps 1v1ing anyone who goes up there. Uh, I should check in with them occasionally, it looks like. Managing to take out uh, a Nubarak this time, 1v1, using, well, I guess, if you count, you know, Rexar's half and Misha's half, it's 1v1, but getting ganged up on by a bear is no fun. Vala just gets taken out, no problem, by Muradin. Just kind of stunned for the longest time and just deleted. Tracer goes back, tries to get on, Mur on uh, <laughs> Lieutenant Morales. Not able to get that kill. She's going to be taken down by the minions. Lily actually, actually has to use a uh, jug to bring her back up to full health. Team Avatar is going in on Morales. <laughs> the medevac comes out again. Bird and Morales in there. They get stunned out after traveling about like a third of the way through their intended flight path. Rickstar comes in and just starts, you know, <laughs> sticking mission on everyone. Lily goes down. Tracer gets out with 100 health. Odin is popped. Uh, looks like Guy's Gem is going to go for the win here. Taking Nubarak out. Tracer's only at 200 health. Vala goes down. Uh, they should have... Well, Morales is down, so we'll see if they're actually able to end. Tracer goes down in the back, unable to retreat. And it looks like they're going to try to siege this up to win the game. Tychus is still up. Shadow Ball Volley comes out, and I think Guy's Gems has this pretty easily. All right, guys, Gems goes up 1-0 in this match with a Cholgal composition, kind of the unkillable no assassin. Just, well, I guess, okay, Gaul's an assassin, uh, but just being able to uh, survive through all of the damage, no problem, and taking out Team Apatos in the process. Um, that was a pretty fast game. Uh, kind of low damage on all of these teams. Um, Ral is doing a pretty good job. Lili doing a good job of healing up everyone, but it was just a little bit too much damage to deal with. I'm going to pop up the talents here. Uh, we will get the next match set up for you guys uh, shortly. So stay tuned. We will be right back.
Alright guys, we are back with game two. Uh, oh, looks like my scores are backwards real quick, let me fix that. <laughs> guys Gems are the ones who went up 1-0 in this series. We are now on Infernal Shrines, uh, Guys Gems versus Team Mapitas, NGS, Season 4, Week 2, Division C West. Uh, guys Gems comes out with a choke all composition in the first game and just kind of steamrolls over Team Mapitas. Uh, they actually drafted a zero assassin game, unless you count Gaul as an assassin. Uh, so <laughs> it's good. it was fun to watch. Um, it, it was kind of I feel like part of the problem there in that composition was that uh, Team Mapitas didn't have that much CC to prevent the the front line from just walking all over their their squishy damage dealers. So we'll see what um, Team Mapitas wants to ban this time around. Uh, it might still be the Dahaka actually, um, based on the fact that Guys Gems does like to play Dahaka. I don't think we'll see the Trogol Respect ban, but you never know. Anything could happen. Let's see what it is. It's gonna be the Sonya. All right, Sonya, pretty good. A pretty solid ban on this map. Uh, the amount of sustain she gets from just spinning in the middle of the minion wave is kind of absurd. And Guy's Gems going with the typical uh, first ban Stukov. It's pretty typical across all of NGS, so not really too many surprises there. Team Mobitas might opt to pick up the Dahaka instead, instead of letting uh, Guy's Gems pick that up and pick that up. I don't know if the, I'm probably not going to go with the, the first pick, Lili. Lili had a hard time that game. You know, the blind's not actually being able to deal too well with the damage coming out from Cho'Gal, since that's mostly magic damage, and just kind of not being able to do that, that AoE healing that was needed from the previous game. Hanzo picked up. Nice clear on the shrines. Just generally a lot of poke. Able to burn down the mercenary camps on this map really nicely. Solid first pick by Team Mapitas. Wonder if Guys Gems will do their typical Dahaka or if they want to kind of just play around a bit and go with another unusual composition. Kael'thas picked up on the side of Guys Gems. Nice AoE clear on the shrines. Able to deal with a lot of, you know, everyone's clumped up on the shrines as well, so Kael'thas does a really nice job of spreading the, the chain bomb there. Alex Straza also picked up pretty early. Um, real nice uh, control of the shrines, of course, with Dragon Queen. We'll see if uh, Alex has a little bit of, of problems with his own control as well. Stukov was banned out, so it's not as much of a problem. Uh, Mal Malfuria can still give her a bit of a hard time since the circle telegraphs where every single person on the team is probably going to be. So I would expect some AoE damage to come out on the side of Team Mapitas, both for the shrines and, and partially to deal with Alex Trasa there.
Jaina, definitely a possibility. Uh, if they want to grab that before the second band phase. Maybe they also pick up... I'm yep, Jaina comes out. And maybe a tank or a support. We're going to go with Varian. All right. So we're going to see which which Varian we get here. Um, I feel like it's probably going to be Taunt, but I don't know the rest of the draft. So we will have to see whether it's a damage Varian or a tank. I fear I'm going to be banned here. So uh, Guy Gem is not wanting to deal with the current uh, generally accepted top tier supports. Uh, interestingly enough, Stukov doesn't actually do that well in NGS. Um, his win rate has not been super great overall in Division C. I believe it has been... I'm going to check that real quick. Stukov's actually at like a 28.6% win rate despite being played in 49 games. So maybe... <laughs> maybe you don't need to use a ban for him, but I definitely understand why you would not want to play against him. Tracer banned out against Guy's Gems. Hmm, this is an interesting one. I don't know if you would have necessarily need a Tracer, but definitely a, a, someone annoying that can get on and, and harass Jaina real easily. Uh, it's interesting also, like, you know, Varian has the point and click taunt, so I'm not sure that that's what Guy's Gems would have wanted to play anyway. Um, but, you know, Team Mabita's not wanting to play against that regardless. Ground and Gramian picked up on the side of Guy's Gems. A solid, again, like zone control for the shrines. Johanna just being able to walk in, get that pull in, setting up a lot of abilities for her team. Hopefully, being able to pull people into Kael'thas's flame strikes a lot more easily. Gramian, again, solid poke, able to get the cocktail build going on the shrines, getting a lot of damage out there. We'll see what Malpitas wants to pick up for their supports this time. I feel like it's going to be something a little bit more traditional instead of a, a first pick Lili. Diablo, great tank on this shrine. This does a surprising amount of damage. Uther, yeah, okay, good pick. Uh, so I like that a lot, uh, being able to just DC Greymane whenever he dives in. Uh, so a lot of a lot of potential to deal with Kaelus' burst damage. Uh, also has a cleanse for any stuns that come out. Uh, so I do like that support pickup this time. A lot better for, for Team Mapitaz. Diablo again. Um, usually we've seen him a lot in some of the. So I think B Div has a lot of priority on Diablo right now, uh, just because like on shrines, all the walls provide ample opportunity for him to smash people into them, gets that bonus damage going at higher levels, uh, and generally provides a lot of threat on the shrines. Varian here could go into. Damage or tank, I think. We'll see what the last pick up is on the side of Guy's Gems. See what he wants to go into there. Alright, our Tannis picked up. Okay. Not really sure the reasoning for that. Might be a, a comfort pick. Uh, we'll see if they're able to get the swamps to kind of isolate someone and just blow them up. Um, our tennis usually you pick against like a, a highly de auto attack dependent team just because the the blind does really well. Um, but you know we'll see what they are able to accomplish with that displacement from the phase prism. All right, going in to the second game of this match, Guy Gems up one zero right now. I think both drafts are pretty solid this time around. Um, I think it'll be dependent on a little bit if Artanis is able to get the uh, swamps that he wants uh, and that you know, Team Mabitaz is able to get the picks with Diablo. Uh, I'm not sure what Varian is going to go into. It's actually a possibility that he goes into something like, uh, like a shield breaker type build. Anyway, getting into game, uh, we have Guy's Gems once again on the left. We have Odin on Johanna, Swish on Artanis. We have White Ghost on Alex Traza, Spruels on Kael'thas, and Cody Kraz on... That's Greyman, I think. Yeah, couldn't recognize him with his hat for a second there. Dietrich on Jaina on the right side, Beanet Player on Diablo. Oh, Holomia? I'm going to mess it up so much. Correct me, teams. I'll try to pronounce your names right. Uh, he's on Uther. We have Donoso on Varian and Mac on Hanzo. That is Team Mapitas on the red team. Teams immediately moving to the center for the traditional mid lane skirmish. Not a popping unstoppable, checking the bush, making sure that she doesn't get uh, stunned up against the wall. 
A lot of questing talents on the side of Team Mapitas. Jaina opting in to the Region Globe build, so eventually she will increase the damage from her Frostbolt. Uther doing the Wave of Light quest. Kale is actually opting into Felon Fusion, not going for the extra survivability provided by the Region Globe quest uh, at later levels. Gaijim is going to lanes pretty quickly. Odin is kind of walking around threatening Mapitas in the mid lane. They're not really going to pick up anything there, and it looks like they are going to do the four, traditional four man mid bot rotation. Usually, I think you'd usually have Jaina down in this rotation, but Hanzo can do it like okay. Um, typically, the thinking with this kind of rotation is you just clear the waves out so fast that you don't, you know, need to have someone dedicated to that lane. Uh, when you get that rotation set up, it makes it really difficult for your opponent to rotate between lanes and set up their pick. Okay, they run back to standard lanes. Jana wasn't in that rotation. Hanzo actually leaves into Johanna. A little bit unfortunate. He didn't quite have a vision of that. Gets away anyway. A little surprising for Johanna to see uh, Hanzo there, probably. Gaijim is moving immediately to pick up the siege camp quickly. The shrine is going to be in the bot lane first. So they're going to get a little bit of pressure in the mid lane. Not too much going on there, I think. Uh, but yeah, Team Abitaz should be able to clear it up real fast. They actually invade. Diablo gets stunned out, but is still on the point. Kill is in a bit of trouble. Double actually turns to the other side and possibly saves him. Uh, they trade evenly. Kill is going down and Hansley going down. Alex was going to use Dragon King, but that gets canceled. Still fighting over the, over the point. Greymane comes in, Venet player is really low, Uther trying to keep him alive. He goes down, Greymane goes down. Alex Charles pops Dragon Queen to establish control over this this camp. Uh, and that was maybe the largest fight I've seen over that uh, <laughs> siege camp in recent memory. <laughs> Seems going basically exactly even though, uh, not even really getting an advantage one way or the other. I think uh, Guy's Gems had, gets a slight advantage there. It looks like they're going to pick up a little bit more of the minion wave XP in mid lane. So they're get they're up about half a level after that skirmish. They're actually going holy shock uh, at level four, trying to get some of that extra like kill confirmation uh, damage. Team Mapitas is going ahead and taking their Bruiser camp. That's some nice play there. Uh, Guy Gems has the same thought. The idea is that these camps are going to push uh, in the opposite lane from where the Shrine is spawning. It should be pretty even. Artanis is going to pick up that camp before it gets too close to the port. However, this means that Team Mapitas has a 4 versus 5 advantage. Uh, in the bottom lane to try to get this shrine. Uh, they also should hopefully know that Alex used Dragon Queen in the previous fight. So that's still down for 75 seconds. And Artanis is joining now, but it's going to be a pretty even fight for Team Octos and Guy Gem for this first shrine. Diablo goes in, tries to get the pick on Greymane. He does. Greymane goes down. Nice swap by Artanis trying to get Hanzo back to where the damage zone can do damage safely. Team Optimus is half health kind of overall. One of the things that Uther doesn't do too well, being able to sustain the team through damage like this. Artanis goes for the dash but does not land a swap. Gaijin is actually ahead in the minion count here, 36 to 30. They, I think they will be able to pick this up. Yeah, they do, unless yeah, unless Team Abitaz is able to get on that more quickly. Uh, they have to be careful. The Punisher is going to leap very shortly, so hopefully Hanzo makes it over the wall and doesn't quite make it before the Punisher leaps. Guys, I'm spreading out to other lanes to make sure that they get all the experience that they possibly can from this this Punisher push. Uh, I like that a lot. Uh, just being able to know that the experience the race depended on, Uther gets, take, gets taken real low and finally gets taken down by a Kael'thas uh, big bomb. Looks like that fort's gonna go down, the uh, siege camp in the mid was taken, Uther finally, Uther, Uther goes finally goes away, and looks like Guy Gem's gonna get this fort easily, and see if they're feeling like they want to go for like the walls as well. Does not look like it. Artanis is sieging up in the top lane. It looks like the the camp that was taken by Guy's Gems actually pushed a little bit harder than the one from Team Mapitas. Artanis took it a little bit later, so that that the uh, Team Mapitas 
uh, camp was a little bit closer to the walls in the top lane. So what probably happened is that the camp on the side of Team Mobsoft was taken out by the structures and the minions, uh, which allowed uh, Guy's Gems camp to push a little bit farther. Down in the mid lane, Artana's got that, that fort real quick. Um, down in the mid lane, Tana gets taken out low again by Kael'thas and Living Bomb. Uh, Mapitas needs to be careful, see if they can get a pick before level 10. If they don't, they're going to be really careful for engage. Nice switch uh, by Artanis there. Tana gets a cleanse and manages to get out. Pop up the talents for you guys real quick. Cleanse looks like it came out a slightly too late to prevent the swap, but good reflexes there on the side of Uther. Ultimate's picked up for uh, Guy's Gems here. We have Suppression Pulse on Artanis. We have Blessed Shield on Johanna. Cursed Bullet on Greymane. Uh, Phoenix on Kelvis. And of course, we have Cleansing Flame on Alexstrasza. One day, Life Finder will be viable, guys. Down the bot lane, Hans was trying to clear out these minion waves. He doesn't really know. Johanna's scout is doing a great job of anchoring in this bush, trying to scout out any rotations from the side of Guy's gems. Hanzo wasn't, you know, had no vision of that. He tries to get away and he doesn't quite that one auto attack preparing him for the explosion from Kelthus' bombs. Nice pickup there by Guy's gems. One of those things where you just kinda have to be a little bit mindful of where your opponents are on the map. I don't think they saw Johanna in that bush, so uh, a little bit difficult to scout out, but good work by guys then getting that pick. There's him goes. They're gonna try to get the bruiser camp. It looks like they're gonna get that no problem. Team Mobbins just, just needs to stoke until level 10 uh, and, and fight the next shrine on an even talent tier. This is a pretty similar situation that they found them in to the previous game. Down two levels at the next objective what they're able to make happen here. They scout out Johanna, who's trying to pick up Diablo in the mid lane. Devil has 98 souls, so he should hit maximum HP for this next shrine. Not quite at level 10 on the side of Team Mapitas, so they don't want to fight down uh, on uneven talent tiers. They should be able to pick this up before that happens. Guy's Gem's really just trying to put as much pressure as they can on the map right now. Uh, doing a good job getting all of the mercenary camps. Alright, Shrine is spawning here in the mid lane. Looks like it's going to be a Mortar Punisher. Odin anchoring for his team. I mean, great job making sure that he knows where all the people on Team Mapitas are. The ultimates come out for Mapitas. We, had, I mean, we actually had Taunt on Garen. Here Frost comes out. The Dragon Zero misses, but it looks like Johanna's going to go down anyway. Alex uses Cleansing Flame, wasn't sure if that was Dragon Queen or not, as the teams disengage for now. Alex trying to get some additional poke damage onto the side of Team Mapitas. Diablo gets a great grab on Artanis, he goes down before Dragon Queen comes up. It looks like Guy's Gems is going to clean up the shrine unless he's not going to there real quick and take out all three of them before it happens. He needs to now retreat, otherwise the Punisher is going to jump on someone. Diablo is so low, should be picked up by Greyman, and he goes down. Punisher pushing in mid lane. Team Mavitas goes and clears out the top lane. The camp was pushing in, but it only kind of just reached the walls there, so not too much damage done onto the top keep. Arian lures the Punisher over the wall, no problem. Phoenix goes out trying to clear out the wave. Punisher doesn't want to get too much done. We'll see if Guy's Gem wants to push for their level 13 advantage and siege up this keep. Dragon Zero comes out and hits three people. Great work there. Blind comes out for Arcanas. Kelvis gets taunted, but actually pushed out of range by uh, Diablo. Mirror Frost comes out and looks like Greyman actually got Janna before too much follow up damage can be done. Uther's gonna go for Holy Shotgun there. Uh, Greyman, he doesn't quite get it. Arcanas now coming up from the bot lane. Deal with this join on this team fight. John <laughs> gets the final hit on Hanzo. It looked like Artemis had dashed into damage and then just one more swipe from Johanna took him down. Diablo goes down as well. Varian is protected for a moment. And he actually gets away just fine. 
Just not able to confirm any kills on the side of Team Mobber Saws. They were down a talent tier. Uh, that was a good pick uh, on, like, in the beginning of that fight, uh, but they chased maybe a little bit too far out from the protection of their fort uh, and end up going down. Looks like it was four for one there. Maybe three. I don't know if yeah, no, the other one down. Alex uses Cleansing Flame, covering her team's retreat. Raymond gets taunted, but uh, Cleansing Flame just able to heal him up no problem. Arcanus is down in the bot taking a, f a camp. If Team Mobbers has realized this, they could potentially take an engage, but looks like they're going to opt to go two lanes instead and not risk another fight down a talent tier. Apocalypse is up, Ring of Frost is back up, Dragon Zero is up, I believe all of the ultimates except looks like Divine Shield. You know, Divine Shield is down for another 4 seconds. Russian Pulse in 18. Both teams just gonna go ahead and take their siege, their siege camps. Guys, Gem's going ahead and invading the Bruising camp. They can kind of do whatever they want for now. I mean, they are up level 15 to 12. They're gonna get that real fast and get out. Artanis gets scouted out in the bottom lane, not able to take the siege camp before he gets found out. Nice, <laughs> nice dash to uh, get away from the Dragon Arrow. Unfortunately, misses. He goes down, but it looks like Guy's Gems is going to take the time to get that siege camp instead. Or take that fort. Sorry, that is a keep. I'm sorry. I know how to talk about building in this game, I promise. I think it's a pretty good trade. Um, just kind of trading out Artanis for that constant mid lane map pressure now. Looks like Guy's Gems is going to rotate out to see if they can catch Anzo when they clean out this lane. Hanzo being a little bit more cautious this time, not sitting in the middle of the lane, sitting in a bush, trying to count, scout out the rotations of Guy's Gems. This is going to be a tough fight for Mapataz, because they're going to be down at level 16 to 13 again, um, and they really need to make sure that, that they either... I think they could... They could potentially give this shrine up? It's kind of a, an, an open question whether or not they would want to try to soak all lanes and get to 16 and then defend. Looks like what they're going to they're try to do is they're going to try to get an early lead onto this shrine and also fight. This is a little bit dangerous. Uh, Guy's Jump has them cornered a bit, trying to take this fight to 14. Ray Frost goes out and gets one person. That's the Apocalypse goes out as well. Playing Artanis, but that's about it. Mavis is trying to retreat, Johanna making that very difficult. Artanis goes in, tries to get Varian, and Varian goes down to Alex's flame breath. Diablo goes down as well. He didn't have full souls, he has 63. Not quite able to survive there. So now Team Mavitas is going to have a really difficult time contesting this shrine. I, I, th I would expect them to go and try to collect the XP in all of the lanes. They need to hit 16 before this Punisher really gets to the keep, but it doesn't look like they're going to be able to get enough from the waves here to do that. Johanna doing the same is kind of soaking. Um, they can try to get this pick. They might be able to. But she's just a little bit too tanky and she can kind of walk away, which is super annoying. Yep, no problems there. Johanna gets away with just fine. Gonna have to back real quick to get full health before the Punisher arrives. And Team Mabito is gonna have to do this defense down level 17 to 14. Punisher lured over the wall, but it actually hits two people. Not exactly what you want to have happen. Phoenix comes out, Dragon Zero comes out. Mega Frost goes out, hits two people. Cleansing Flame covering the Guy Gem team. Not really too much damage there. Janet gets taken out pretty low by that that last hit of Cleansing Flame. Hanzo needs to be careful. He's kind of Artanis can probably get him with the dash. Um, you know, we'll see if they uh, they opt for that. Uh, Artanis stops chasing. They're actually gonna go for the core. It looks like. Good call. Level 17 to 15. <laughs> the phase was a misses. Uh, just barely keeping Hanzo alive for now. I don't know if it's going to matter too much. Apocalypse goes down, hits three people, but the core is falling rapidly. 16, 15, 7%, and it's down. That was a nice clean sweep by Guy's Gems, who goes up 2-0 in this series versus Team Mopitas. Great work there. Uh, getting all of the damage out there. Cool. Yeah, not much to say about... about that game, I think, a lot, just not a solid play from Team Mopitas, or, or Team Mopitas, well, and Guy's Gems. Uh, Guy's Gems man making sure that they were always ahead in the level 13 to 16 tier, 
uh, and just basically able to push their advantage uh, for as much as they could. I think they ended both games in similar fashion, being up level 13 to 16. All right, cool. Gonna take a quick break to see if I'm gonna pop up. I'll just leave the stats up as I try to see if we would like to do an interview. All right, gonna go ahead and try to set up an interview here. Looks like we're going to try to get Cody Krez on the line. I can actually find, I don't know, I'm gonna have to look for people in the Discord. Alright, just trying to see, there's an NGS um, patron uh, tournament going on, so I think Smithel is casting that on his channel if anyone wants to go check that out after this game. Excellent. Cool. Okay. Um, I just muted. Now I just muted myself. Okay. Now we're good. All right. I mean, so we have Cody Kress like, here from like, Guys Gems. Uh, how do you feel after that game? It looked pretty solid. Not too many problems there. Yeah, we're pretty excited. It was a very clean set of games. Um, we we were feeling pretty amped up going in because we know it's one of the, the better teams in our division, at least according to the standings. So we're mm -hmm. excited to perform well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so tell me about the, the Chogol in the in the first game. Was that something you just like wanted to do, or is that a specific strategy for that map? Or, or maybe that was just a response when, with, when they pick a, a first pick Lili. Uh, <laughs> tell me about <laughs> that, <laughs> that Chogol. Yeah, it's kind of a combination of the three, right? It was, we knew it was going to be good for the map. We knew it was going to be good against what they'd shown. Uh, and we just we feel pretty good with it at this point, so we were happy to rip it. Cool. Well, I guess other teams should watch out for that Chogol then. Uh, yep. Definitely, definitely fun to watch. Um, tell me a bit about the. I mean, the draft for the second game looked pretty solid. Um, are those just kind of like comfort picks? Um, actually, I think the one pick I wondered about in Infernal Shrines was was Artanis. Was what was the thinking with that? Uh, since they didn't have too many auto attacks uh, for the blind, uh, was it just camps or something else? Yeah, it was especially the camps and also the um, looking at what their team wanted to do. They wanted to engage on us hard, and Artanis was going to be able to sustain through that. Um, so we just wanted to kind of, you know, poke and then have Artanis to be a bully in the back line and stuff. So he seemed to fit what we wanted to do into what they were trying to do well. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, I mean, there's obviously, I don't actually, have, that game was so clean that I don't actually have too many questions about it. It was just, you know, really solidly executed by, by you guys. Um, also, you know, great. <laughs> Team Amadeus just kept getting a little bit too far behind, but also some great play there as they try to counter your engages. Cool. Um, got any shout outs for us on the stream? Yeah, shout out to my team. We've been having a lot of fun this season. It's going really well. So thanks yeah. everybody for keeping and doing it. Uh, thank you guys, uh, both you for casting and NGS in general. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, it's our second season. It's really cool. If you aren't doing NGS and you want to next season, you should do it. Um, and yeah, thanks anybody who's our friends, family, whatever, who's ever watching our stuff. Thanks. Cool. All right. Thanks, man. Good game. Yeah, cheers. We'll see you around. See ya. See ya. All right, thanks. That about does it for me on this cast. 
Uh, thanks for watching. Um, we you can always find me at my Twitch channel. Uh, give a subscribe if you want to be notified when more games are being cast. Um, I'm also around on Twitter if you really want to follow that. Um, everything is just at Falandrith. Uh, give me a follow. Give me a a watch. Uh, hope to hear from you guys again. Thanks for tuning in.